want to go over with you guys what I take out with me into those whitetail woods. Yes, there's a lot of stuff on this table here, but it does all fit my Alps pack. First of all, my bow setup. It's my Hoyt, it's my Torx XT. It's set at 27 inches, that is my draw length. And right now it is set at about 55 pounds. Sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little less. While I'm filming this right now, I'm still elk hunting, so I'm at about 55, 56 pounds. It may go down a little bit lower when the weather gets colder because it'll be harder to draw back. On my bow also, I have my True Glow Sight, my Range Rover. I have shot a single pin movable sight. See, moves up and down. I like it, some people can't handle just one pin and thinking they have to worry about moving it. I like it better because it is one pin. Without all those other pins in my way, I never have to worry about it and I've been doing it for so long. It's just a matter of almost like when you practice all the time. It's your memory, it just goes, it does what it needs to do. I have a 20, a 30, a 40, and a 50 line marked on it. So I'm set to go no matter what the distance is, whether I'm shooting 3D targets or hunting. When I am bow hunting, I am shooting my Easton Axis arrows. This is a five millimeter. The reason I do have a five millimeter is because I do have a blackout lighted knock on the end of it because I do like to see where my arrow is hitting when I'm aiming at the animal. Sometimes you know deer like to move right at last light. It's gonna help you see where that arrow hit. My Easton is also tipped with the new Archery Products Thunderhead Broadhead. Yes, it is an old broadhead. It has been around for ages, in fact, it might have been around probably before I even started bow hunting, honestly, which is 30 something plus years. It is my favorite go-to in the moment head to do it for fixed heads. Thunderhead 100 grain broadhead. These are replaceable blades on this broadhead. And along with this broadhead, what I do is I actually have, Easton makes them, they are broadhead adapter rings, okay? And what they do is it tapers down onto my arrow and it is going to make sure that my broadhead is on my arrow secure and snug and not have to worry about anything, any of the blades coming out or anything like that. Yes, it's an add-on, but it does make me feel more confident in my equipment. Along with my bow setup also, I have my release. My release is always in my backpack, it's always with me. Actually, my extra release is always in my backpack with me. I do shoot the True Glow Caliper. I love the wrist strap. It does everything I need it to do. I know where my anchor point is every time. It is a very nice, smooth caliper. I don't think twice about it. And again, it also has a boa strap where you can take it off quietly. And once you put it on and you're in the stand and it's on you, it's gonna stay snug tight. You have no flapping little extra strap sticking out or anything because this little boa right here is gonna keep it nice and snug for you. I also carry in my Alps pack two sets of gloves. Yes, I shoot with gloves on all the time. I don't care if it's 90 degrees outside or if it's 20 degrees outside. I always shoot with my gloves on, even when I'm just practicing. I always have an extra set in my bag in case I lose one. That's one of the main things I do also. I also usually carry around with me, which I don't have sitting on this table, is packable rain gear. We got ours from Bass Pro Cabela's. It's this big, it's light. I throw the top of my bag every single time I go out because you never know when that storm is gonna come by. Warm weather, you're gonna need something to cover your face. Now here's the deal, when you're up in a tree stand, the thing that's gonna get shown the most are your hands, cause they're so light colored, which is why I have gloves, but also your face. Every time you hear a squirrel walking behind you and you twist your head real quick, this movement and this big face here is gonna cause attention if there's a deer looking around. You always need to have some kind of face cover. Whether it is just a face mask to cover you up, whether you wanna go ahead and take, this is just an HS stick, it has um, dual, like three different colors that you can go ahead and put on your face. It's also great for like elk hunting. Or just a regular big old warmer gator if you need to that can totally cover up your face so that you are not moving around. And if you are in the stand moving around, your face is not glowing every direction. My hunter safety system harness. It's my tree harness. Every time you get to your tree stand, whether you're climbing up, you're climbing down, when you're getting in, when you're getting out, it doesn't matter. Every time you leave the ground, be sure to be connected from the ground up and back down. 80 something percent of all tree stand accidents happen getting into and out of your tree stand. I don't care if you're using steps, sticks, a ladder stand, whatever it is, be sure to always be connected from the ground up and back down. Always use a lifeline. Yes, we carry bow rope around with us all the time. When you set your stands up, if they're your stands, you may already have a bow rope on it. But if you are gonna go to an outfitter or go over to a buddy's place or something like that, maybe they don't have bow ropes. 
Always carry a bow rope in your backpack with you so you're not trying to do that thing where you try to put your bow on your shoulder and climb upstairs, up ladders or whatever. Not safe, not a good idea. A bow rope all the time. Once you get up in your stand, tree arm. You just move it around, you twist this into the stand and it is going to hold your bow. This one will actually hold it down lower so you can put it wherever you want and this whole piece will be out of your way once you get up in the tree. Put this up obviously before you pull your bow up. When it's early season, it's warm outside, one of the things you might want to start up right away is your thermocell. There was times back in the day before thermocells came out, we would have competitions to see how many piles of mosquitoes we could stack up. We don't have to do that anymore because we have our thermocells. It will stop you from moving around the stand. I promise. So before you go out to the woods though, one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go get some HS, get some Senaway laundry detergent, some body soap, some shampoo. Get yourself as clean as possible. And when you finally get out to the woods, make sure you have a bottle of spray. Spray yourself down one more time in case you got some odd scents coming through you when you're getting out of your vehicle or whatever. Remember to spray your boots as well because wherever you've worn those boots could have scent on them as well. The thing is, is that we take these little bottles with us in the stand because you know what? When it is hot outside and you're sweating down, no one's perfect and your sweat may smell, I'm just saying. So we do keep this with us all the time. The other thing we do take are the field wipes. It's kind of a noisy pack to open up while you're hunting, but it's great for after the hunt. And if you are able to go ahead and get yourself a deer, these are great for hand wipes and to make sure that everything else is clean. We have worn these HS scent wafers forever. People often ask us, oh, is that a microphone on your head? No, this smells like fresh earth no matter where you're at in the world, okay? Seriously, it doesn't matter if you're in Alaska, Africa, North Dakota, Colorado, wherever you happen to be. Dirt smells like dirt. This right here, it comes in the package. We have three little things. You put one right through in this, and you can stick it on your hat. You can stick it on your backpack. You can do whatever you want. It's really more of just a cover scent, and it's just to keep that human scent down and manageable. It's a good idea to check your weather to see which way the wind is blowing. But the other thing you can do in a pinch is just get one of these little indicators. Look at that. You can tell, I don't know if you can see it there, but you can see which way the wind is blowing. So you'll know if that stand's going to be good to where you're going at. It's also great to have with you while you're in the stand because you know at that prime time all of a sudden you feel that wind hitting the back of your neck and you want to make sure that maybe it was just a, a hiccup of a breeze or maybe it's totally blowing into the direction you don't want it to it might save your hunt i love the hs true talker we've had these for years they never fail you can make different noises with it fawn bleeds doe bleeds buck grunts it does everything you need right there have to have this in your backpack one other thing is a buck bomb now these you can use in different ways. A lot of times we'll just take the can with us into the stand, almost more of a cover scent. This one here is Doe Really we just spray just a little bit, but the whole purpose of a buck bomb, along with like their bear bombs and their elk bombs as well, is once you open this up, you can actually press it and lock the spray nozzle down and set it down and it will disperse the entire can of scent in your area to make the whole area smell either like a doe nestress or a cow in heat or a bear birthday cake or something. But still, this we use in the tree stands with us just as a little bit should the wind start swirling or not, you know, start swirling, you start feeling it a little bit weird, spray a little bit of this out onto your tree. You don't have to lock the button down so it doesn't spray continuously while you're in the stand. Another thing we carry in my pack, optics. I have usually with me when I'm whitetail hunting, they're usually eight by 42s. Get the best ones that you can afford just so you can see what's going on, you know, over in those further cornfields in directions and like that. Also, a range finder. You're going to want to make sure you have a range finder set. When you get into the stand, you can go ahead and you can click on different trees, different clumps, little bushes and stuff like that so you can see and know the yardage. So when a deer is walking in, you're not all of a sudden fumbling around trying to get your range finder out of your backpack or hanging it up on the bow hook. You already know what that 20 yard mark is or what that 30 yard mark is. You just know it. Again, it goes back to me using my True Glow single pin Range Rover sight. It's a movable pin. I can be ready for this. I know that tree over there is 20. That clump of grass in the middle, the one that sticks up a little bit higher, you know what I'm talking about? That one there, that one might be 25. And that bush over there is 30 yards. I can figure that out. And as that deer is coming in and which trail he's on, I'm gonna be able to just very quickly move that pin side up and I'm gonna make my shot, my headlamp. 
This is used more than you would ever think. We all have phones in our pockets. They all have flashlights. They're not gonna do what you need them to do when you're getting in and out of your stand. Most headlamps nowadays come with red or green lights as well, which are both pretty good to walk into in the dark when you're walking to your stand in the morning, but they're also great for walking out of the stand and making sure you get all your stuff up out of your tree and you make it down that tree safely. The other thing is if you shoot an animal, you want a bright headlamp that's gonna help you find the blood trail and recover that animal. And again, headlamp on your head while you're field dressing your animal. It's gonna be much easier than trying to hold a flashlight in your mouth while you're trying to field dress it, just saying. You get an animal, what are you gonna do? Well, obviously I need a knife in my backpack. So I have a new muddy knife right here. The nice thing we like about this, these blades are very thick. We're not having any issues with the tips breaking off. With the way it is inside this bar here, it makes it so much safer because it's not popping off and it makes it also easier to replace the blades. This is the new muddy swap knife. Love this blade, this is amazing. Love this one. But I also have, just in case, I also have my cold steel. That's a just in case thing. It also has um, blades that I can swap in and out of should I need it. This one I actually carry on my quiver, which is a hip quiver. I carry it just in case for some reason I do put my pack down and I don't have this one on me. I still have another knife. I did keep talking about my backpack. This is my Alps backpack. It has tons of pockets. It has pockets within pockets. It has a big pocket, it has little pocket. It has side pockets. It has everything you could imagine that you would want in a backpack. It has a rain fly, so you can take that out and cover it should it start raining. This pocket here has my windicator in it. However, I also use these pockets for another necessity is my coffee cup. Because my coffee cup fits nicely right into that pouch there and I know it's not gonna fall out. The other thing that I do throw into my backpack, because it has so many pockets, which everyone will laugh, um, when nature calls, yes, extra toilet paper, always need that. You know, that's in case you don't use your wipes. But also, an extra battery for my phone with a cable in it. You know, sometimes you're out there all day. If you're not reading a book and you're playing on your phone and then you shoot something and your phone is dead and you can't get anyone to help you get it out, Remember, just bring an extra battery. It's just common sense, just bring it. And of course, one of my favorite things to do have in my backpack is my snacks. Yes, whether it is peanut butter cookies, raisins, gum, I always have some kind of food in my backpack. When cooler weather, there might be a candy bar in there. But basically, this is everything that I carry with me in my pack or on me while I'm hunting. It's precautions. You're going out on a whitetail hunt. If you're sitting all day, you wanna make sure that you are set that you're gonna have no issues whatsoever with everything you have going on. So if you have any questions, hey, you know what? Send us a message and ask me and I hopefully I can help you out. And if not, good luck this season.